In this lesson, we're going to discuss the cylindrical projection method. All right, so in the last lesson, we had discussed um, kind of the basics of UVing and the goal of UVing, and then we also discussed the planar map projection. Now let's go ahead and talk about cylindrical map projection using the handle here. So the handle, we're going to treat it the same way, except we're just going to use a different projection method. So let's make sure that we have polygon selected and turned on, and then let's select the polygons in the handle. Make sure that you get all of them, but we don't want that spike, and I want these along the bottom here. Okay. Now with these selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cylindrical projection. So let's hit that and you'll see that the gizmo that comes up is a little offset and it's facing the wrong direction. Now I want it to align itself in the Z direction so let's align that and then I'm also going to hit fit and center. Okay. So now that that has been set up let's take a look at the way it's been unwrapped and for the most part it looks really good. It's a little long stretching just a little bit uh, but that's okay. The other thing that I want you to notice is the gizmo itself. The cylindrical gizmo has a green line on the side, and that's letting us know exactly where the seam is going to be cut. As you can see, it's reflected right here on the model. Now, if you want, you can rotate that gizmo, and you can rotate it, and it will reflect. Let me rotate it along the X, or I'm sorry, the Z. And you'll notice that as I rotate it, it repositions that seam. Now, in the original position, that was a good place because it followed along with the seam right along the side of the sword here. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. So now that we have that, let's turn off our cylindrical projection and let's open up our UV editor. Here you can see that the um, handle has been unwrapped and it's into uh, it's been unwrapped into a very nice little square, which would be great. Uh, for texturing, but if we take a look at our texture map, we've got some stretching going on here. So how do we fix that? Well, first, let me go ahead and move it away from everything else. And I like to work out in this area, and then I'll repack it into the 0 to 1 space. Um, so looking at this, it's really nice and neat. Um, there are a couple of things that we're going to have a problem with, though. We've got a little bit of stretching on the main portion of the handle, and we've got a lot of stretching here across the top along these more beveled edges. So we have a couple of challenges that we need to address. Now uh, before we do that, take a look here at the seam. You'll notice that we get these little offshoots of seams and what that means is that we've got two vertices on top of one another right here. Okay, Let me show you what that looks like here. So if I select this vertex and I move it, you'll notice how it splits off. Okay, So a way to get around that is to simply select all of those vertices along that edge and right click and weld selected and you'll see that those seams have disappeared and now we have one seam that goes all the way around the, the top here so that looks really good now um, a couple of issues that we have the handle uh, needs some work okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to polygon mode select the entire element and I'm going to scale it so if I grab the scale if I hold down on that you'll see that I can scale it in the horizontal or vertical direction Right now, I just want to uh, scale this in the vertical direction. So if I scale this up, okay, making it longer, you'll see that the texture becomes a little more normal. So if you have a stretched texture, you mean you need to make the UVs larger. If you have a squash texture to where it looks something uh, like this, you need to bring it down. Okay. So the goal is we want to get those to be as square as possible. Now you don't have to be absolutely perfect. There is um, some room for error in there, um, and it really won't modify uh, or tear up your textures too much. Now the one place that I am concerned with is these polygons here. Okay, I'm concerned with these the most. So let's go ahead and take those, and I'm going to break those off of my UVs. So I'm going to take this row right here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to break. Let me grab my move tool and I'm just going to move that up. Let's do the same thing here. Um, this one is going to be uh, the bottom two and I'm going to right click and break. Pull that down there. Alright, great. Now looking at this, um, you'll notice that we have some polygons that are overlapping one another. OK, 
okay they're sitting right on top of each other just like we had in the last lesson so let's go ahead and select this section right here and what we'll do is we're going to do a relax and we'll start that and you'll see that that relaxes out now there's still going to be a little bit of distortion even with that relax and it's okay um, there's very little but I don't really care too much for it it's a little bit too much for me now you might be asking well if the relax worked and we've unwrapped it that way why are we still getting some distortion well here's one of those challenges the polygon count might be a little too low so if you want to increase the polygon count by adding some segments in here um, that would help alleviate some of that distortion now with something like this asset that's supposed to be low polygon and in, in an MMO type of game maybe we can't add any more polygons so what we have to do is we have to just take that and do the best that we can and we may just have to unwrap it a little bit differently which is what we're going to do so with these polygons selected instead of using that cylindrical uh, map format let's use planar and see what we get here so I'm going to um, select planar projection with those polygons selected and you'll see that that comes out a little bit flatter and seems to do pretty well now anytime that you reproject it's going to send it back into that zero to one space okay so just remember so let's take this out let me turn off that relax let's take this out here let me turn off planar projection and let's see what we have here well let's take a look at these polygons here you'll notice that these are overlapping um, other pieces here and what is happening in the UV is it's still trying to keep the same form that we have here these polygons are underneath uh, the UVs here so what we want to do is I want to select the polygons across the top just like so and I'm going to reproject those in a planar fashion reprojecting those is going to break that away from the existing UV uh, cluster that I had and then I'm going to select these and I'm going to do the same thing so planar and let me turn off planar and pull that up here now that's not too bad um, it might need a little bit of work still getting a little bit of distortion so what could be the issue the top looks really good okay but the bottom not so great so what could be the issue here well it's possible that because of the direction that the model is going that it's distorting that and we just don't have enough resolution for that to relax and to um, get rid of that distortion as easily so what we'll do is we'll start to manually adjust our UVs and the way that I tend to do this on these types of models is I tend to select certain polygons like so and then I'll right click and break that apart and I'm going to do that all the way around so selecting the two polygons right clicking and break right click break okay and I'm gonna break that apart and then what I'll do is I'm gonna go to edge mode and I'm gonna select this edge right here okay and then I'm going to use custom stitch and what that will do is it will bring that UV and stitch that along that edge but then I'm going to take the edges that it just created or just moved and I'm going to drag them out to where it's flattening those out like so so if we take a look at that that edge there you can see that this looks pretty good it's wrapping around and it's not distorting quite as much still gonna get a little bit but it's, it's a little more manageable now so let's do the same thing here stitch and then I'll just grab these um, edges and pull those out now you don't have to be perfect with those right now because what we'll do is we'll relax that once this has been um, set up properly okay so just move these out try to get them close to what they were or what they should be but we don't have to check our model after we move it and we don't have to sit there and fine-tune it okay so let me pull that one out stitch this one 
and then we've got one more and there we go so now that that has all been stitched together you can see that it's laying out much better than what is what it was before but we still have some stretching and squashing so now all I have to do is select that element okay using element mode and then let's go ahead and relax by polygon angles you'll see that that relaxes and that turns out quite a bit better than what it was before now it's not quite as round as I would like so I'm going to scale it in the horizontal direction to where it's a little more round okay and sometimes you just have to do this manual uh, labor with UVs it's not just clicking on a button and hoping that it lays out properly sometimes you may have to do this alright so now we need to do the same thing to the top piece here and we've got most of this uh, ready to go here so let's go ahead and just select these top polygons all the way around and then we're going to use that planar map just like so and let me fit that in the Z fit and center okay that looks fine and then I'm going to take that and move it Oops, move that up and then let's take these polygons right across the bottom and do the same thing so planar and Z and then I'm going to move this um, out away from here and let me do the same thing with this one now looking at our map uh, this the bottom portion looks really good it's the top one that's giving us the most distortion so we're going to break these polygons apart and then we'll stitch them to this piece here seeing how it's okay so I'm going to right click and break do that for all of these and you have to do it one by one otherwise what it will do is it'll just take the UV cluster set that we had before and uh, keep it the same whenever we hit break so you want to make sure that you have a selection and then what you're going to break it from okay so let's select the edges we go to this edge right here I'm going to um, weld that using stitch and then I'll just move that out and we're going to do the same thing for all of these this one will go a little bit quicker seeing how we've only got one edge to move and again it doesn't matter how far you bring that out just make sure you bring it out in that positive direction to where they're not overlapping one another and one final one okay there we go let's go ahead and select polygon mode and the element let's grab that and move it up here and then we're going to relax that and there we go let's grab our scale tool and scale it in the horizontal to make that a little more round and that looks pretty good now there could be some issues uh, with breaking it apart like that where we have a seam right here in the middle um, the issue that we could have is that if we were going to paint this in Photoshop um, using traditional uh, 2D uh, hand painting techniques uh, we could come up with some issues okay where uh, we could definitely see a seam here and we'll talk about that um, in a little while we're, we're not going to dive into that just yet um, but if you're using like a 3d uh, painting program like Photoshop has 3d capabilities where you can bring in a 3d model and paint right on the model um, you should have no problems okay seams aren't really that much of an issue with that uh, sort of workflow okay so now that we've got everything unwrapped we've done that cylindrical um, mapping technique let's go ahead and grab the bottom piece here and let's unwrap it seeing how it's the last piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use planar map and you'll see that it comes out in kind of like this cylindrical shape but you'll notice there's a lot of stretching here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the edges okay right here in the middle and let me get, turn off element mode and I'm going to right click and I'm going to break it and what that will do is split that edge into two edges okay and then what we'll do from here is grab that entire cluster we're going to use relax and relax by polygon angles and there we go and then if you take a look at this it it lays out really really nicely okay so it does really well so the final thing that we want to do once we have all of our pieces unwrapped we want to simply grab all of those clusters 
and we want to pack those using pack custom. And you'll see that it packs those into the UV space and then it tries to um, keep the overall size um, of the texture the same. So it tries to um, average out the resolution. So to see this a little bit easier, let's go to our material editor and let's go ahead and select the uh, map. And then we're going to go to tiling, which is right here. And let's switch that from 1.0 to 4.0. Let's close that down and you'll see that our texture map, um, we can see more of it. So it looks like the, the checker pattern has gotten smaller. And notice how consistent it is all the way through. Now with something like a low resolution model like this, the overall resolution is not as important uh, because we may not be using a normal map. And so what we're relying on with a model like this is strictly diffuse. And so we can get away with making some of the uh, clusters much smaller and making some of the other ones much larger.